as the story of Fernão de Magalhães, or better known as Ferdinand Magellan, continues. King Charles of Spain granted the approval of Ferdinand Magellan's proposal plan of a great sea expedition. A fleet of five galleon ships were prepared and tasked for the voyage to look for a spice island. Then preparation for the voyage began together, with Magellan's excitement of his dream of a great sea adventure. As what was planned, Ferdinand Magellan started sailing the west route of Europe. Magellan boarded the galleon ship Trinidad to lead and to command over a fleet of five galleon ships. Magellan's fleet journey was accompanied by four other galleon ships, the San Antonio, commanded by Juan de Cartagena, the Concepcion, commanded by Gaspar de Quesada, the Victoria, commanded by Luis de Mendoza, and the Santiago, which was commanded by Juan Serrano. Around September 1519, Magellan's fleet sailed off from San Lucar de Barrameda, Spain, and headed across the Atlantic Ocean. And after a month of sailing, the fleet journey reached South America. As days and months went on, the fleet journey suffered and felt the tantrums of Magellan's adventurous sea expedition voyage. Food and water were rationed to the crews on the galleon ships. Starvation made the ship's crew's morale low and unhappy during the voyage until they found land and reached the port of St. Julian. Due to the tragic experience of their voyage, the three galleon ship commanders Mendoza, Grisada, Cartagena, had a misunderstanding with Ferdinand Magellan that led to an uprising. That made Magellan conclude that the ships Santiago and Trinidad were the only ships that were loyal and faithful to him. While they were leaving the San Julian port, the ship Santiago was wrecked and the other crews had to be taken to the other vessel. Despite all of those mitigating circumstances, it did not compel Magellan's quest to pursue and continue with the journey. On October 21, 1520, Magellan finally entered the strait that he had been seeking, better known as the Strait of Magellan. But after a month of sailing the strait, the commander of San Antonio's ship and its crew depacted and decided to go back to Spain, leaving the three galleon ships Victoria, Concepcion, and Trinidad to reach the Pacific Ocean. Upon entering the Pacific Ocean on November 1520, Magellan was amazed with the peaceful and calmness of the sea, and he later named it Mar Pacifico. This video is sponsored by Huion, the global leader in creative tablets manufacturing. After a few months sailing, they then reached the Pacific island of Guam in March 1521, where they finally got some food and refilled their food storage. Magellan's fleet then sailed on to the Philippine archipelago and landed on Cebu. Raja Humabon and his wife, together with tribes, native locals leaving there, warmly welcomed the arrival of Ferdinand Magellan together with his ship crews. Ferdinand Magellan was very glad about the warm welcome and hospitality 
shown to them by Raha Humamun and his wife, together with the local natives of Cebu. So as a gesture of understanding and friendship, Magellan introduced Christianity and convinced the native locals to convert to Christianity. This binding agreement of understanding between Magellan and Raja Humabun was sealed off. Raja Humabun, along with his wife, was baptized with a testimonial acceptance to Christianity and the rest of Raja Humabun's native followers. But this event marked the birth of Christianity in Cebu. In addition, it was on March 17, 1521, when Magellan planted the famous Magellan's Cross in the presence of natives of Cebu with some Portuguese and Spanish soldiers, which symbolizes a sign of triumph over the birth of Christianity in Cebu. However, Magellan also wanted to spread Christianity to other neighboring islands of Cebu. So he asked Raja Humabun's help to spread Christianity. And fortunately, Datu Lapu Lapu of Mactan Island disagreed to Raja Humabun's appeal and took a hard stand against paying homage to the King of Spain. And so, the rivalry between the local chieftain arose. Raja Humabun then asked Magellan's help to fight against the chieftain of Mactan Island, Datu Lapu Lapu, and the fighting warriors of Datu Lapu Lapu. Knowing Magellan's supremacy in terms of firepower and other fighting arsenal was an advantage to their victory. This was because Raja Humabon wanted to cut the leadership power and strong dominance of Datu Lapu Lapu over the island of Mactan. And on the day of April 27, 1521, the Battle of Mactan erupted. Ferdinand Magellan using European weaponry at the time, bombarded the village of Datu Lapu Lapu that burned the village houses, causing the villagers to run and scamper for safety. These triggered more anger and hatred among the fighting warriors of Datu Lapu Lapu against the foreign invaders. With burning anger in their hearts to what happened to their village houses and to their family and loved ones, scampering around, crying and shampering around, the Battle of Mactan started. With Lapu Lapu's fighting warriors, Kampilan, bolos, spears, bows and arrows, those with poison and its tip versus guns and cannons from the foreign invaders. Unfortunately, Magellan did not make it during their clash encounter with Datu Lapu Lapu after Magellan was hit on his neck by a poisonous arrow which caused his death on April 27, 1521. After Magellan's death, only the galleon ship Victoria successfully returned to Spain in September 1522 with a full cargo of various spices. In spite of Magellan's death, it was not the end of his journey. Instead, it was just the beginning. This was because the expedition he started not only provided another route to the spices, but also paved the way for the European explorers to expand their geographical knowledge. He also became the root of the birth of Christianity in the Philippines. And after this day, his ambitious expedition around the world is still considered as one of the greatest feats in the history of navigation. This is History Animated.